Hey everybody, this is Mobiler12 here to help quench that knowledge thirst. For this video, I'll be specifically talking about anhydrides. This will be a continuation of my discussion on acid derivatives. Okay, so there will be three specific reactions you guys will need to know. Okay, so I don't think this video is going to be like 18, 17 minutes long. Hopefully, it will be short. Quick little update. I do have a Facebook fan page, link in the description box below. Show your love and support, like the fan page, um, tell your friends and family about my YouTube channel and the fan page. So do what you guys got to do. Um, also feel free to start posting your specific questions in regards to the new series. Hopefully in the near future I'll start uploading videos on that. Okay, uh, so let's get started with our discussion on acid derivatives, uh, specifically anhydrides. So Anhydrides typically take the structure I've shown here on the starting material section. You have an oxygen wedge between two carbonyls, and then at the end you have two carbon groups hanging off of it. Okay, so again, oxygen wedge between two carbonyl groups with two carbon groups represented by R here. Okay, again, R in the starting material section represents carbon groups, alkyl groups. It could be a benzene. There is a specific type of alkyl group, a carbon group. Um, also, there are two different types of anhydrides. There are those that are symmetrical and those that are unsymmetrical. So, clearly a symmetrical anhydride will have carbon groups that are exactly the same. These R groups will be the same. And unsymmetrical anhydrides will have carbon groups that are not the same. So, for example, if you have a symmetrical anhydride, one symmetrical anhydride is acetic anhydride where you have a methyl group here and a methyl group there. An example of an unsymmetrical anhydride will be one where you have a methyl group here and an ethyl group there. That's unsymmetrical. So I'll be specifically focusing on symmetrical anhydrides because they'll make the discussion much more easy. Okay. So let's get started. Three reactions. So the first reaction, actually before I get into the reactions, a, little, a few other things I want to talk about. Um, the things I have in brackets, those will be your leaving groups. So these leaving groups, for each and every one of these reactions, you'll generate a carboxylic acid. And the carboxylic acid is the byproduct and it is a result of these leaving groups. Okay, so these leaving groups that I have in brackets, this guy here and uh, this guy here, all three of these guys here will be a carboxylic acid at the end of the reaction as a byproduct. And each and, one, each and every one of these guys I have in brackets will be replaced by the things I have in brackets here um, in the reagent section, okay? So let's get started. So the first thing, the first reaction we have is a, a symmetrical, again, I'm talking about symmetrical anhydrides. You have an anhydride that is symmetrical reacting with this um, water, okay? So the OH of the water is going to replace this piece here. So what you end up generating is, if this marker works, hopefully, let's see. Okay, this doesn't work. Let me get another marker. Hopefully this one works. What you generate, okay, this one is, okay, this will do. What you generate is this carboxylic acid, drawn as such, right? Let me zoom in on the top section of it so you guys can see it. So you generate that carb uh, that carboxylic acid due to this OH replacing this piece here, and you generate this this like I said earlier, this piece will become a carboxylic acid as well. All you have to do is add an H to that oxygen. Plus, this works. Oh my goodness, none of the markers work. Hold on one second. Let me let me try this one again. Plus, you have, okay, there you go. I have to push down really hard. Plus, you have that carboxylic acid as well, okay? So this carboxylic acid came from this. This carboxylic acid came from this OH replacing this thing here. So at the end of the day, when you treat it with water, you get two carboxylic acids that are the same. That's the easy way of thinking about it. When you treat, again, when you treat a symmetrical anhydride with water, you get two carboxylic acids that are exactly the same. So this carbon group here and this carbon group here will be the same. So effectively, the carboxylic acids will be the same. That is only when we're dealing with symmetrical anhydrides. The next thing we have is a, an 
a symmetrical anhydride reacting with a with a alcohol this R1 represents a carbon group uh, specifically why I put the little uh, mark right there is just to show that this carbon group here does not have to be the same as these carbon groups here it could be different types of carbon groups um, you could have a primary secondary or tertiary alcohol it doesn't really matter and um, nice and simple you replace this piece which will become a carboxylic acid with the piece I have in brackets here so effectively you generate a ester okay that looks like that plus you get a carboxylic acid from this piece here I like the little squeaky sound, that's funny. Um, so again, you generate your ester by this OR group replacing this soon-to-be carboxylic acid. So you generate your ester and this piece here becomes your carboxylic acid you see here. Let me zoom out and let's go right here to this final piece. And the final reaction, we have a symmetrical anhydride again reacting with a amine. Um, one thing I want you guys to realize is through the course of each and every one of these reactions you lose a hydrogen as you can clearly see from the first reaction okay when you treat the symmetrical anhydride with the water you lose that H the only thing that replaces this piece here is the OH so that's the thing that you'll have in your product and when you react this starting material with this alcohol this H is not going to be present in your ester okay you don't see an H hanging off this oxygen, you lose that H. And the same thing applies here. When I draw the product, which will be an amide or an amide, depending on the way you want to pronounce it, um, this H here is not going to be there. You're going to lose an H. So from each and every one of these cases, okay, you lose a hydrogen through the course of the reaction from the reagent section. Okay. So um, something I want you guys to realize is that this R prime and R double prime will represent, it could represent a H or an alkyl group. So these R1 and R, R, R prime and R double prime can represent an H or an alkyl group. Um, they can both be hydrogens, they could both be alkyl groups. Um, one could be an H and one could be an alkyl group or a carbon group. It doesn't really matter what, but it has to be either an H or an alkyl group, a carbon group. Um, and that only applies for this reagent here and specifically for this piece here um, these R's have to be a carbon group this R here has to be a carbon group so on and so forth uh, so it's nice and simple this reaction of forming an amide um, or an amide you replace this thing I have here which will become your carboxylic acid with this piece here that I have in brackets again you clearly see how you lose the H from the reagent section you lose one H um, so your product, your form will be an amide drawn as such, right? We can draw the lone pairs on nitrogen and the other thing that you form is your carboxylic acid from this piece here that looks like this Okay. And there you have it, nice and simple, okay? So again, these R1 and R2, basically R double prime, could be an H or they could both be H's. They could uh, both be carbon groups. One could be an H, one could be a carbon group. doesn't really matter. And that's what this piece is telling you here. So that's it. Those are the three reactions for anhydrides. I uh, hope it's nice and simple. I hope you guys understand it. Um, so stay tuned to the second part where I go over, um, let's see, I go over some examples, okay? So stay tuned to the second part.